Okay, so you must be a CD buyer. Are you a CD buyer? You have to be a CD buyer, right? Because if you're not, no, if you are, then you're gonna love multi-year guarantee annuities. So that's kind of what you're looking into. You've heard about it. You haven't heard about it at the Bad Chicken Dinner Seminar because the commissions on multi-year guarantee annuities, and from here on in, let's just call them MIGAs. That's the acronym. <laughs> MIGA commissions to the agent are very, very low, and that's the reason that there are no, I guess if they did a bad chicken dinner seminar on MIGAs, they would just serve coffee because they couldn't afford to do anything else. That alone should tell you the value of the product. MIGAs are the annuity industry's version of a CD. So when you see all these cats out there saying, I hate all annuities, Annuities are all expensive. Annuities are all bad. Uh, no. Annuities, <laughs> most of them are very simplistic. Most of them have no annual fees. And for this specific one, multi-year guarantee annuity, the MIGA, it functions similar to a CD. In other words, you, you have a guaranteed annual interest rate that's contractual for a specific period of time. Sound familiar? Yeah, that's, that's how a CD works. So we're gonna go through all of that uh, information about multi-year guarantee annuities, compare them to CDs, and you know, one's not better than the other, they just kinda work together. MIGAs have a different benefit proposition than CDs. And then at the end, if you hang in there with me, and I encourage you to do so, then I will send you this. a multi-year guarantee annuity owner's manual. Yes, there's enough information on the product to write a short book on it, which I did because I want my clients to be informed on what they are getting, okay? And if you wanna see the best MIGA rates in the country, go to standtheannuityman.com and we have a live feed of the best MIGA rates available in your state because MIGAs are regulated at the state level, fixed annuities are, and so each state has MIGAs that are approved for their state. And you can go look and see, you pull up the state, pull up the duration you're looking at, you're looking to, to invest in. So in other words, you're from Texas, you pull up Texas and you say, I'm looking for a five year rate, pull up five years. And then magically, it will appear all of the top guarantees in the country. So hang in there with me and I'll tell you how to get the book at the end of the video. Okay, so I said before that MIGAs are like CDs. So what's the difference? Here's the primary difference. When, with a CD in a non-IRA account, like a non-qualified account, you have to pay taxes on that interest that you earn every year. With a MIGA in a non-qualified account, it, it's a tax-deferred interest compounding. Some, some MIGAs have simple interest. Most have compounding interest but uh, you don't have to pay taxes on that interest annually. Now, eventually you do have to pay taxes when you bring the money out, but there's a lot of people out there that say, hey, I just want safe money, I don't wanna lose a penny, and I want just an interest rate. Okay, great, let's, let's look at MIGAs and CDs. Which one's better? They're both good, okay? If you're a CD buyer, you'll like MIGAs, and if you're looking, it really comes down to duration. I don't sell CDs, but I think they're fantastic. They, they perform the same function that MIGAs do, they provide an interest rate. If your time horizon's like one to two years or one to two and a half years, then you need to buy CDs. They're gonna provide the highest contractual rate. If your time horizon is say three years to five years or more, so three to seven, three to 10, then a multi-year guarantee annuity, the majority of the time is gonna provide the highest contractual annual yield. So how would we use them together? Um, I would do a, what's called a fixed rate ladder. So I don't sell CDs. If you want to go find the best CD rates, go to bankrate.com. Best MIGA rates, standingannuityman.com. So you'd say, okay, I've got $500,000 example, and I want a five-year fixed rate ladder. What would I do? Well, you'd buy a one-year CD, a two-year CD, a three-year MIGA, a four-year MIGA, and a five-year MIGA. That would be an example of a fixed rate ladder using both products. Now, if uh, in an, inside of an IRA, both are tax deferred, but if you're, if you're looking at outside of an IRA, non-qualified, then that's kind of where MIGAs might really play a role with your planning and your safe money planning because 
that interest is tax deferred. So that's kind of the primary difference. Benefits and limitations, you know, that is the primary benefit, the tax deferral of Omega. Um, you know, there's no annual fees, no moving parts, no market attachments, easy to understand. Limitations would be, um, let's just say, for example, if you bought a five-year MIGA and you said, Stan, I want to, get, and you're in year three, and you want to get all your money back because something changed in your life, the surrender charges are pretty predatory, you know, during that five-year time period. You know, once you're past the five-year time period, there's no surrender charges, et cetera. So that would be a limitation. The other limitation, a lot of people want specific carriers to offer MIGAs and some do, some don't. You have to go to the feed at standingnewdemand.com and see for yourself who's offering them in your state. But some carriers just choose not to offer multi-year guarantee annuity. So that's kind of the benefits and the limitations. Okay, a couple more details that you need to know about MIGAs. Number one, some of the MIGAs allow you to peel off interest. So if you said, Stan, I want to protect the principal, but I want the interest to come out every month and go into my bank account. Some do, some don't. You just have to, on the MIGA feed at standingnewdemand.com, you can filter that and see which ones do and which ones don't. Um, in addition, there's not a lot of inventory for MIGAs under the three-year duration right now. There's a couple that have like a one-year, but, but if you're going to buy a one-year piece of paper with a guarantee, you probably should buy a CD. Go to bankrate.com to look at that. Or your local banks, you know, heck, just shop it. You know, it's like a commodity. It's a commodity product. Um, but typically, the inventory starts at the three-year level. Um, there's a lot of five-year level MIGAs available, and you can go as far out as 10 years plus. I wouldn't advise that at the time of this taping. I would tell you, you know, five, maybe seven years would be tops that you want to lock in. So, you know, just put that in mind, the yield curve valuations and all of that stuff. In other words, in English, what they're doing, they're not rewarding you to lock in longer um, than that. Got a call the other day, and this, this will answer probably a question that's in the back of your mind. The guy said, well, I'm okay with the MIGA, I like the MIGA, but what happens at the five-year point, he's going to buy a five-year MIGA, what happens at the five-year point if I don't want the money, um, you know, I don't want you to send me the money? Well, here's what we do. IRS rule number is 1035, that's the section, 1035. You can do an annuity to annuity transfer, um, and it's a non-taxable event. So in a non-IRA setting, you know, I told him, you know, at the end of five years, what we would then go and do is shop for the highest rates. If he wanted to go to another five year, the highest rate, and we would transfer from one annuity to another annuity, non-taxable event. And hockey analogy for all you hockey people out there, just pushing that tax puck down the ice. Eventually, you have to pay taxes when you take the money out. But if you want to keep deferring and keep rolling the annuities and it be a non-taxable event, you can do that via the IRS 1035 rule. If you're very bored and you want to read that, it's IRS section 1035. Now, if the MIGA is inside of an IRA, you can obviously transfer IRA to IRA and it not be a taxable event as well. So that's a lot of information thrown at you. Okay, so we covered a lot about MIGAs. So I do encourage you to go and, and look at this video as well. Deferred income annuity pros and cons. People ask me a lot about deferred income annuities. I really dig into that. So that's a video you might want to look at. So let's talk about the book. I promise you the book. I'm going to send you the book. My Gut Owner's Manual. Do me one favor first. Click that subscribe button because I'm putting out a ton of these videos. They're very informational. I hope you've enjoyed them. If there's any that you want to see that I'm not covering, type it in the comments box. Be nice. No, uh, no yelling at me. I'm doing the best I can uh, with these videos. So type in the comments box what you want me to cover and I'll try to get to that since we're putting out a ton of these. So if you go to the Stan the Annuity Man description down below this video, you'll see the word show more or more info or something like that. Click that and there'll be a drop down from that that will show a link that says get my annuity owner's manual. Now, put in your shipping address because the United States Postal Service is gonna deliver this nice Willy Wonka package to your front door and you're gonna get your MIGA owner's manual. I do encourage you to go to my site, standingannuityman.com to look up current rates. And if one of those rates look appealing to you and you want to lock that in, you, uh, you let us know as well. We'd be more than happy to take care of you and have you as a client. And with that, thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.